Hello guys and welcome back to the channel, this is Shane with Hoosier Hardware and today I want to bring you another PC build. This time it's going to be a semi-budget uh, gaming Ryzen based PC. Now credit where credit is due, the, the basis for this video comes from a recent hardware unboxed video where the guys over there pitted the Ryzen 1400 against the 1500X and noticed that the differences between the two, at least in gaming, are actually pretty marginal. Now the key here is that this is a gaming PC. This is not meant for things like content creation. I suppose you could do some light streaming on it if you really desired that. But really we're aimed at purely just gaming, specifically at a 1080p resolution. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the specific parts that make up this sub $700 gaming PC. And at the heart of the build is the Ryzen 5 1400, which is a quad-core 8-thread part from AMD. Now, if you really want to do a little bit more overclocking, especially out of the box, then you may want to go ahead and jump at the 1500X, which comes with the Wraith Spire Cooler. And by the way, I did a video on the Ryzen 1600 and how it handles overclocking with that same Spire Cooler in a separate video that I'll link in a card. But essentially, the Ryzen 5 1400 here comes with the Wraith Stealth Cooler, which is a 65-watt TDP cooler versus the 95-watt Wraith Spire. Now, the Stealth will probably allow you to do some very light overclocking, but if you really do want to push this Ryzen 5 1400 to its limits, which, by the way, are still around that 4.0 gigahertz mark, depending on your chip, you'll need to invest in a cooler. And by the way, if you're looking at a cooler for the 1400, a really good option would be the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo, which right now comes in at $25 on Newegg. It provides great performance at a great price. It's sort of the old standby for tower style coolers. So if you're really looking to push the Ryzen 1400, this may be the cooler for you if you're still looking to stay on a budget. Moving on to the motherboard, I was a little bit torn whether I wanted to go full ATX or micro ATX, and I landed on micro ATX and as with my last build you can sort of swap this out for whatever micro ATX board you prefer from whatever vendor you prefer. I have always liked ASUS because I believe their UEFIs are extremely clean and easy to work within so I went with the ASUS Prime B350M-A. The nice thing about this motherboard is that it gives us all the features we're going to actually need or want from a micro ATX motherboard in this system build. It gives us four DIMM slots for RAM expandability down the road. It gives us a couple of PCIe by one slots, which can allow us to add things like a Wi-Fi card or some other sort of uh, by one expansion card down the road as well. And of course, it gives us an M.2 drive slot, which would allow us to put in a higher speed SSD in the system down the road as well. It just gives us generally a lot of upgradability and a lot of room to grow in to the B350 platform. Moving on to RAM, I selected some DDR4-3200 RAM from G-Skill. Now, this RAM is at a little bit of a premium over something like a 3000 megahertz kit, but here's the rationale behind that. Right now, I would be a little bit surprised if the Ryzen 1400 could run this RAM at the full 3200 megahertz speed. However, UEFI updates down the road may allow for that type of stability. We don't really know, but at such a small premium over other RAM that is lower speed, I figured why not go ahead and invest in the 3200 kit because at worst, we're going to run it at below spec speed, but it should be extremely stable regardless. And now on the graphics card side, I picked an RX 570, and this is a 4 gigabyte variant. Right now, there's really not a whole lot in the way of 8 gigabyte variants of this card, and it weighs in at $170. Now the rationale for picking this card over something like the 4GB 580 variant is pretty simple. We save $30 on the retail cost of the cheapest RX 580s, plus most people at this price range probably aren't going to be gaming on a monitor that supports anything higher than 60 FPS, and I really feel like the 570 gives us the best bang for our buck in this price range and will allow us to game even modern AAA titles at that 60 FPS point, especially if we're willing to just tweak a couple minor settings. We may not be gaming at full-on ultra settings, all anti-aliasing maxed, but we will likely be gaming very close to that. 
Now storage is another place where we may have sort of skimped out a little bit and I did a video on how storage doesn't really affect your gaming performance once you're in game outside of load times and you can click on the card there for that video. But essentially I went with a $50 Western Digital uh, blue one terabyte drive and you can sort of insert any other one terabyte or even lower capacity drive here if you find the right price for it. Basically, in my mind, I'm going with the console type setup of getting more storage cheaper. And then down the road, you can always add an SSD as a boot drive. Uh, you can even take advantage of that M.2 slot eventually when those SSD prices come down a little bit further. For the case, I decided to go with the Fractal Design Core 1500, and it's a little bit expensive for this type of build coming in at $60 plus shipping, but I feel like it's actually kind of worth it. My rationale with computer builds has always been there are certain parts that you really shouldn't cut out on, and the computer case in my mind is one of those. This particular case will give you some cable management behind the motherboard tray, which really isn't an option on cheaper micro ATX computer cases. It gives us plenty of expandability with the drive cages. It actually does support water cooling if we want to go that route down the road. We even have some five and a quarter inch drive bays in case we want to turn this into a living room style computer where we might want that DVD or Blu-ray drive for media playback on a television. Lastly, the aesthetics of this case are actually very simplistic and I really appreciate that. It won't stand out or look like the centerpiece of any room, especially if you're putting it in the living room, it won't stand out like that sore thumb. It'll just sort of blend in in the background and do its job. And lastly here we have the same power supply unit that I used in my last Ryzen build and by the way you can click the card above to check out that Ryzen 1600 build. But the reason I like this power supply is actually relatively simple. EVGA is a very reputable company and they bring us an 80 plus bronze certified power supply. And although the cable management will be a little bit more difficult, especially in the tight space of a micro ATX case, the fact that it is ketchup and mustard cables won't actually bother us much because the case we selected does not have a side window of any kind. So as long as we get those cables or the excess cables rather out of the way, uh, then it should be just fine for our use case. And by the way, the 450 watts will be more than enough to power our very energy efficient graphics card and processor combo. So there's my Ryzen 5 1400 gaming PC build weighing in at just under $700. The other nice thing about this build that I want to point out is there is only $10 in mail-in rebates available right now. So really, even if you decide you don't want to go the route of rebates, you're still only going to be paying around $675. And by the way, that does include a copy of Windows 10 Pro. And again, card above for those of you that don't know how you can locate a Windows 10 key for about 5 or $6. I did a video on that one as well. So tell me what you guys think about this build. Where are its weak spots? Where can it be improved in efficiency? Where can you save a little bit of money? Let me know in the comments below. As always, guys, if you like this content, give me a like, share, subscribe, all those things down below. They help out a lot. You can follow me on social media at Hoosier Hardware on both Instagram and on Twitter. And as always, we'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.